Villagers come from the mountains to petition the saints for a good harvest and healthy livestock. The procession takes place once a year. It's the big event in the Jujuy province of northwestern Argentina, one of the country's poorest regions. Here, the day begins only after the sun comes over the peaks. The villages of the Puna Plateau are located 4,000 meters above sea level. Sometimes there's even frost in the summertime. People live from raising livestock and a bit of farming. Jorge Quispe and his sons regularly chop a bush known as tola, which covers enormous stretches of the Puna Plateau. The plant is a source of fodder and firewood for heating and cooking. We harvest tola once a week for baking bread. We need about 30 kilograms of it each time. We don't pay much attention to exactly how much, but about 30 kilos does the trick. The brush burns quickly, so large amounts are needed to fire ovens and hearths, because most cooking is still done on an open fire. And that's why the tola is disappearing. The mountain climate is changing. There's less rain, and many people are migrating to the cities. Christoph Müller went from Germany to Argentina many years ago to try to stop this exodus. He works for the Argentinian environmental organization Ecoandina. Ecoandina wants to equip the villages of the Puna Plateau with solar technology. Stoves, ovens, bathhouses and heating plants have been built here in recent years, financed in part by German development funds. Even the school in the village of Misarumi, which has some 60 residents, is heated with solar energy. We built the first solar heating in 1997. I designed it as part of my master's degree. Since then, we've equipped another 10 schools with the system because it's worked well. The warm air comes from vents in the walls. Before the system was installed, the children often had to eat and study at temperatures around the freezing point. Today, the average classroom temperature is about 20 degrees Celsius. It's a pleasant place for the children to have their breakfast now. It's not like before when it was too cold. If you don't move, then you get cold more quickly. But now it's much more comfortable and nice and warm. Besides, we also save on gas and firewood because we use solar energy. All solar heating systems are built in the region. One of the workshops is located in the small town of San Salvador de Jujuy. They're just working on a new solar water heater. All the parts come from Argentina, supporting the local economy. We're working with local small firms, which are also active in other areas, so that gives them some security. But the orders for solar energy equipment are growing each year as demand for water heaters rises. That's created more jobs. At the moment, about 10 people are involved in these projects. Müller always goes out to visit the new customers himself. Ecoandina doesn't have much money, so he takes the equipment with his own car into the mountains. It's an arduous trip. The drive over bumpy roads and mountain passes takes hours. Farmer Armando Arias has ordered a solo water heater for himself and a neighbor. At 300 euros, it costs more than a month's income. Nevertheless, demand is high. Neighbors ask me when there are going to be more heaters and where you have to order them. Today a lady ordered another heater. Armando has had a solar heating system for years. To buy it, he went prospecting for gold in the mountains. And he sold some of his llamas. But he now has a functioning shower. That's a real rarity in this part of the world. Before we had the bath, we tried to wash as well as we could. That was a long time ago, when there was no running water in the village. Afterwards, 
when the public bathhouses had already been built, I asked Christoph to set up a system for me. I was the first one to get it. Armando and his family rely on solar power for cooking as well. He says the solar heating system was worth the expense. Eventually, he'll even be able to earn some money by using solar energy. This measures sunshine and records it over a longer period. That allows us to determine how much CO2 we've saved by using a solar boiler. This saving can be traded as an emissions certificate and earn additional income for the families. That's money that people like Armando Arias need in order to survive on the plateau. With his llamas and crops, he has 10 people to feed. So solar energy in Pune doesn't just benefit him and his family. It also ensures the land will not become a barren place devoid of people.